Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Calculus AB, and we're going to be doing Unit 6 review. We're going to be doing sample AP problems for Unit 6. Remember, Unit 6 is about integration and the accumulation of change, and this is one of the more popular uh, topics on the AP exam. And so we're going to go through a bunch of different multiple choice problems that will be sample problems. So let's get to it. Number three, you can see here, here we have an integration of 0 to 4. That's my limits of integration of x e to the x squared. So I'm going to use u substitution for this. u is equal to x squared is what I'm going to use it for. So du is equal to 2x dx or du one half du is equal to x dx and so you can see I'm gonna go plug this in and so I know I have one half x dx is gonna be one half of du I have e to the u power and remember whenever I'm doing u substitution with uh, integration I have to plug in my my limits into my original equation so zero goes in zero squared is zero 4 squared is 16, and you can see what my answer is. My answer is B right there. Let's take a look at number 6. Number 6, we have, uh, our, we're going to take a look at another U substitution. I'm going to do U substitution is equal to 5 minus 3X, which means DU is equal to negative uh, 3DX. And so you can see right here, uh, I know one, negative one-third du is equal to dx, and so I have my value is negative one-third integral of 1 over u du, and my limits of integration, I'm going to plug them in again. So we have 5 minus 3 times 2, that's negative 1, and I have my uh, other value is 4, 5 minus 3 times 4, that's negative 7. And so you can see when I do this, what is the integral of 1 over u is natural log of u, so I get negative 1 third, and I have natural log of u, and I'm going from negative 1 to negative 7. And so when I plug that in, I end up getting negative 1 third natural log of negative 7 over negative 1. Remember my natural log properties, which means I am left with B right here. Negative 1 third natural log of 7 over 1. Let's take a look at number number 20 here. Number 20, we're using the fundamental theorem of calculus, and so you can see I'm taking the derivative of the integral, so what am I going to do with this, this 2x value? I'm going to plug him right in there, so I have natural log of 2x, which is being cubed, that's going to be 8x cubed plus 1. And don't forget, I have to also do the integral, uh, sorry, the derivative of this guy, the der derivative is 2. So I have 2 natural log of 8x cubed plus 1, which is d. It's a fundamental theorem of calculus. Here is an accumulation of change. We're taking a look at what's the integral or the area from 0 to 7. So you're going to split this up into nice little uh, rectangles. This is the way I like to do it. And you can see I get an area of 1, an area of 2, an area of 4, an area of 1, an area of negative 2 because it's below the axis, and that gives me an accumulation of change of 6. Let's go to the next one. The next one is number 26. Number 26, you can see I'm going to do the antiderivative, or I'm looking at the fundamental theorem of calculus again. And so you can see how, what do I want in right here? I want a t, and what do I want for my value is x, because the derivative of that x is 1. And so there's the fundamental theorem of calculus rearing its ugly head in number 26. Now we get to number 78. Number 78, we can finally start using our calculator, but we don't need to use our calculator. Uh, the way I like to do these problems is where they're doing this accumulation of changes, I, I like to think of it like area. So from 0 to 10, from 0 to 10, the entire area is 21. And then you can see from 0 to 10, uh, half of g is equal to 8. So half of g is equal to 8. And so you can see that is his area there. And what do I know is from the, so half of g is equal to 8, which means 
from 0 to 10, this g of x graph is going to be equal to 16. So you can see if you take this f minus g, you're going to be getting 5. So think about that. If you take f of x minus g of x from 0 to 10, you're going to get 5. Okay. And then what did they say? They said uh, from 3 to 10, the difference is only 2. So from, from 3 to 10, that difference between f of x and g of x is only 2, but that's only from 3 to 10. And they want to know what's the difference between 0 and 3. Well, if the difference overall is 5 and the difference from 3 to 10 is 2, then I know the difference in that first little part is just 3. So that one's just using a little bit of reasoning. I like to use my area of uh, some functions in order to do that reasoning. Uh, number 83, you can see they give me a table here. Number 83, they're going to give me a table. They're looking for the uh, the Riemann sum. And we're looking from 0 to 3 of my continuous interval. And so I want to find out what could be a value. What could be a value? Well, if I go with my left Riemann sum, my left Riemann sum is, is going to be uh, 0 times 0.5. 4 times 0.5, 10 times 0.5, 18, 28, and 40. And I add all of those up and I get, um, I believe I get like 50 for that. Yes, I get 50. If I do the right Riemann sum, I'm going to start with 54 and go the other way. So the right Riemann sum is going to be uh, 54 times 1 half, that is 27 plus 20, plus 14, plus 5, plus 2, and I end up getting 77. So what is the actual value going to be? It's going to be right smack dab in the middle, 62. All right. Let's go to number 91. Number 91 is my last problem this exam. And you can see what are they doing here is they're saying from 0 to 8 of f of u du, it's equal to 6. And we want to know from 1 to 3 of x, f of x squared minus 1. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to do u substitution here. u equals x squared minus 1. du is equal to 2x dx, which means 1 half of du is equal to x dx. Uh, let me take a look at that. I'm going to plug in 1. 1 squared minus 1 is 0. 3, 3 squared minus 1 is 8. Boy, that worked out really nice. We get 1 half of du is equal to x dx, and that's f of u. So what are they looking for? They told me from 0 to 8 of f of u du is 6, so what would 1 half be? That would be 3. So that's seeing whether you can really do your u substitution in a different way. Let's go to that other exam. That other exam, uh, we're taking a look at number one. Again, we have our fundamental theorem of calculus. We're going to plug in a um, do my integral. So I have t cubed minus t. And we're going from 2 to x, which means I'm going to plug in x, x cubed minus x, minus 2 cubed minus 2. And I end up getting a right there. Uh, number four. Number four, we can use u substitution for this one. I like using u substitution. That's something that uh, I like getting a lot of practice at. u equals 2x plus 1. du is equal to 2dx, which means 1 half of du equals dx. That's nice. I'm going to plug in my values for 1, my lower limit 1. We end up getting uh, 3. We pull, plug in 2, we get 5. We have 1 half of 1 over u du. What are we going to get? 1 half of natural log of u. We're going from 5 to 3. Sorry, from 5 to 3. And so what do you know we end up getting? 1 half of natural log of 5 minus natural log of 3, which would be natural log of 5 over 3, um, which is right here, or 1 half of natural log of 5 thirds. Okay. Let's take a look at number 8. Number 8 is actually forcing us to do u substitution. What are we going to use for our u substitution? Well, I'm going to use a sine of 2x, which means 
my du is equal to 2 cosine of 2x dx. Well, that's really, really, really nice, isn't it? Okay. Um, so I know that I'm going to have u to the fifth power dx with a 1 half in front because that that 2. I'm going to plug in my lower limit, so I'm going to plug in sine of 2 times pi over 6. That's sine of pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2, and we know sine of 2 times pi over 2, that's sine of pi is equal to 0, which means I am left with d right there. Let's take a look at number 12. Number 12, we're going to we're going to four sub intervals, which means I'm going to give myself a little table here for number four. Okay, so at zero, I plug in zero. Nine to the zero power is one. Uh, one half. Well, I know what nine to the first power is nine. I know what two is. Uh, nine to the second power is going to be equal to 81, which means you can see the way this works right here is everything's multiplying by three, and I'm going to do um, uh, right Riemann sum. So I'm going to do 81 uh, times one half. That's the distance. So I don't know what that is, but it's very close to 40. Remember, we're just approximating here. 27. We have one half. That's about 26. So or I'm going to call that 13. Nine. That's really close to like 10. So it's going to be five. And a three is really close to four. I'm going to call that two. You add all that up. You have 15 and five. That's 20. That's a uh, 60. So remember, we are approximating. We don't have to be exact when we're doing Riemann sums. Let's take a look at 26. 26. I'm moving through my exam really quickly. Number 26. We are doing the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I'm going to plug in that that square root of x right in there. So we have 1 plus square root of x squared. That's x. And don't forget, I have to take the derivative of x to the 1 half, which ends up becoming 1 over 2 root x, which means I end up getting a right there. Fundamental theorem of calculus. Now we go to calculator problems. Number 77, uh, we will use a calculator for number 77. How I would suggest doing that, it says if if sine of 1 over x squared plus 1 is an antiderivative of f of x, which means take the derivative of that. In your calculator, you're going to do d over dx of sine of 1 over x squared plus 1. And then you take that answer, and you're going to plug it in right there. So you plug that answer in for, to your calculus from 1 to 2 of your answer. That's a 1 right there. dx, and what do you end up getting is negative 0.281. Make sure you press control or uh, control enter to get the exact answer using that. Uh, number 83 is one of those ones that we've seen a lot. That's where we're, I like to draw a little bit of a diagram there. Okay, And I like to say from 0 to 6, from 0 to 6, the area of f of x is 9. It says from 3 to 6, from 3 to 6, the area is 5, which means this side is 4. Makes sense? And then it says from 0 to 3 of g of x, sorry, from 3 to 0, is negative 7, which means from 0 to 3 of g of x is equal to positive 7. You just flip that bad boy around. And they want to know from 0 to 3 of 1 half of f of x, which means half of that, that's going to be equal to 2 and minus, sorry, there's a minus symbol right there, minus 3 times g of x. So 3 times that po positive 7, that's 21. That gives us negative 19 for my total area or accumulation of change overall. Number 85, you're going to use in your calculator for number 85. Okay, well, You're allowed to use your calculator. And so you can see we know the velocity time function right there, t squared minus 1 over t squared plus 1. We want to know the distance. Distance is scalar. And we're going from 0 to 2. So in your calculator, you're going to go from 0 to 2 of the absolute value of this function right there with respect to t. If you use x's, use it with respect to x. But use your absolute value. Uh, that's the button next to the number 9 on your calculator right there. Uh, number 87. Number 87. We have, we know it says the slope is going to be less than 3 from 1 to 8. 
is less than 3 from 1 to 8. And they gave us at 5, we have a point equal to 6. So if our point is at 2 is equal to 0, we can take the slope. So 6 minus 0 over 5 minus 2, that gives us a slope of 2. We take a look at the next one. We're going to go 6 minus negative 2 over 5 minus 6. That gives us negative 8. Those all work. Those are less than 3. But you'll find out this third value does not work. So we have 1 and 2 only, which is C. And I think we have one more. And this is the last one for this exam is number 88. They're asking, here is uh, our graph of f of x. H is equal to... Um, the fundamental theorem of calculus and so as we take a look here we know that uh, h of 2 is equal to 0 we know uh, h prime of 2 that derivative is equal to a negative value and you can see if we take the second derivative it's going to be a much more negative value which means we're left with e right here for our answer uh, that was unit 6, sample AP problems. This is a, the largest unit on our AP exam, so make sure you go through these questions carefully. Have a great day. I will catch you on the next video on Unit 7 Review. Thanks. Bye.